What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. Before we start this video, though, I do want to say a couple of things. Number one, happy Easter Sunday. I hope you guys are having fun with your family, having a fun Easter dinner, all that stuff right there. I really hope you have a good holiday. That's number one. Number two, I wanted to kind of touch on uh, touch on uh, the thumbnail and title a little bit, a bit when you guys see this video because this is based off of some stuff that I've been talking to you guys and to my guys in Storms United about, and they're telling me this is looking more and more like a derecho, a derecho setup. Although all severe hazards are possible, so this is something you're gonna have to pay attention to, Patrick. So that's kind of why the titling and uh, thumbnail is like that. So with that being uh, with that being said. I'm not responsible for what you guys do with this uh, with this video or anything like that. This is just stuff. Uh, this is just based off of stuff we've talked about and just some stuff that we've been paying attention to. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Before we get to the enhanced risk uh, day that I want to really take a look at today, there's a little bit of a slight risk from Cincinnati all the way to uh, to west northern Missouri and southern Iowa right there. The main threat for this is hail right there from uh, pretty much crossing Hannibal, Springfield, Indianapolis, and Cincinnati. So we're going to have to pay attention to that. So that's what we have going uh, going on scattered thunderstorms are expected to stay along a corridor from northern Missouri into the Ohio Valley with large hail expected damaging gusts are possible and a marginal tornado threat also exists so yeah it's main the main threat is for hail and from what I've heard that uh, there could be hail up to golf ball sized for some of these thun the stronger thunderstorms so we're gonna have to keep a very close eye on it let's go ahead and take a look at the forecast models to kind of give you a little bit of timing on that and then we'll get to the main event that I am paying very close attention attention to so that's what we have going on right here starting uh from what i'm uh, on look taking a look at all well, the 12z her is actually out as of right recording this video so we'll go ahead and take a look at that as of right now it does it looks like and it appears that the uh, weather isn't going to really start until about three or four o'clock in missouri and then move into illinois around 4 p.m and and, th and then pretty much kind of uh, uh become a little bit less severe and less discreet and become more of like a linear system which could help lose its severe characteristics but by around 6 p.m chicago area could be seeing some general rain and a few thunderstorms but the discreet stuff's going to be mainly in central illinois central indiana into ohio right there that's where your biggest hail risk is and it's based off of some of these computer models that we are paying attention to if we go ahead and show you the supercell composite for today right here supercell composite there's not really that much to kind of take a look at right there there were it's kind of a little difficult to kind of pinpoint. If I can go ahead and pull the wrap up real quick. The wrap's not really doing us too many favors right there. There's not even really that much cape to kind of for it to work off of. So it's kind of being driven by shear. So definitely some stuff to kind of pay attention to as we continue to move into the, uh, tomorrow and beyond right there. So that's what we have going on for today for Easter Sunday. So I figured I'd just kind of briefly go over this. But then we're going to go ahead and go to the main meat of what we're looking at tomorrow. Here's what we have. We still have an enhanced risk from the pretty much Oklahoma, central Oklahoma, all the way to Indiana over here with St. Louis and Evansville now being effect, in, kind of inserted into that. The reason they've been inserted to that is because there's now a 10% tornado risk with a 10 hatch tornado risk uh, in parts of southern Missouri and southern Illinois right there from Springfield to near Evansville, Indiana. So that's what we have. The wind risk is now up to 30% for pretty much a lot of the severe risk air, uh, area in Arkansas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, and Illinois right there. But the hail risk still appears to be the generally the more larger threat right there, although the wind threat is starting to kind of materialize and kind of uh, give the, us that little derecho setup that I was talking to you about earlier. 30% hatch risk and then a 15% hatch risk down in Oklahoma. So we're going to have to pay attention to that right here. A widespread threat with a potential of large hail, wind damage, and tornadoes is expected on Monday and Monday night from... Uh, parts of the southern plains north eastward towards the mid Mississippi Valley. Very large hail will be possible across parts of the southern plains and Ozarks. Great, the greatest tornado threat is expected from southern Missouri into southern Illinois Monday evening. The severe threat is also expected to impact parts of the Ohio Valley, especially 
during the evening and overnight period. So that's what we have going on tomorrow right there. If you are pay if you are paying attention to this in Indiana and Ohio, this is looking like it's going to be more of an evening threat where in areas like Oklahoma and like Missouri, Oklahoma, Arkansas and those areas, it does appear to be more of an afternoon threat and more of a discrete threat before it becomes a massive squall line and potential derecho. Now, that's just, that kind of wording is based off of what I'm hearing from my severe weather team at Storms United, as well as a few other guys I know from, from David Schlothauer's channel, like Butterdog, Fire Ant, even Schlotty himself has talked about it. So, yeah, that's what we have going on right there. And we're going to kind of go over briefly the meteorology behind it real quickly, just to kind of give you an understanding of kind of what we're potentially looking at. We're going to go ahead and kind of use the HER model, and we're going to move over a little bit to... Uh, the Southern Great Plains, because that gives us the biggest kind of glimpse at it right here. So that's what we have going on. This is for tomorrow right here. In the morning, we're going to see some relatively decent cape across pretty much from Oklahoma all the way to Indiana over there. By 1 o'clock in the afternoon, we are looking at Cape in some in a lot of areas cracking 2,000 joules per kilogram right there. And that's why they put a 10% hatch tornado risk right there because there's a lot more energy than we were originally anticipating in parts of Missouri, Illinois. We're cracking 3,000 joules per kilogram of Cape in Randolph County, Illinois at one point. So, yeah, that's pretty crazy to take a look at and quite an uptrend from before. And it appears that cells are going to start firing uh firing off shortly after this and we're looking at cape values ex almost ex exceeding 3000 in a lot of areas that's pretty insane to take a look at let's go ahead and take a look at the supercell composite yeah the supercell composite really spikes up across Missouri and Illinois right there the highest level we're looking at is 16 17 out uh, 20 actually in one area right there in Missouri and Illinois we're looking around 10 thir 12 13 that region over there so we're going to have to pay very very close attention to that Sig Tor parameter is kind of iffy, but I am going to start using it to kind of give you a gauge of what we're potentially looking at. Sig Tor parameter is actually rather impressive. We're looking at some areas of like, or we're looking at 9.4 Sig Tor parameter over here. Around I saw a 7 Sig Tor parameter of, yeah, 6.9 over there and especially across, uh, potentially across Missouri, Illinois, even into Indiana as well where they could see some more discrete thunderstorms. Now let's go ahead and kind of look at temperature, dew point and kind of see what the driving factors are behind all this. Here's the temperature that is expected tomorrow pretty much in Oklahoma. We're looking at anywhere from like uh, upper 70s to mid 80s across this uh, the state over there where the severe weather risk is the highest right here and then you have a, another area of like especially around the St. Louis area like 76 77 upper 70s and mid to upper 70s across much of Missouri over there as storms start to fire up dew point temperatures continue to increase as well we're seeing some areas of exceeding 70 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, which is pretty crazy right there. That is a he very heavily moist environment altogether right there. And you can see kind of where that moist pocket is m mostly set up. And that's why the SPC risk is there right there. But now you're probably going, oh, Patrick, man, you're talking ab about the meteorology again. What are the impacts going to be? Why aren't you showing us the reflectivity? I'm going to I'm going to right now. I'm, so I'm sorry, guys. Just want to give you the kind of basics behind this. Here's what we're looking at right here. Uh, start. Uh, we do have some stuff starting to fire up, but they're multi, mainly multicellular in the morning, parts of Oklahoma and Missouri. But it's in the afternoon where things really start to fire up across Missouri, Illinois, Oklahoma, and then you have this squall line step setup start to initiate in parts of Oklahoma. That's why you have that 30% hail hatched hail risk right there, and that's why we're looking at more of a wind threat than we were initially. There is the possibility for very discrete supercells going into the uh, evening right here before it starts to become more linear as it shows right here it becomes more of a squall line as it moves through Missouri, Illinois and then starts crossing into Indiana, Kentucky right there and going into day 3 right there. So that's what we have going on. And I will and I will say I do agree with the SBC that the tornado risk is going to be the highest in Missouri and Illinois right there mainly due to how discrete these cells are. In fact, we can go ahead and pull up the wrap. I want to pull up a few soundings from Kind of what I'm looking at right here. This is surface-based cape. We're gonna do the night. We're gonna do uh, around 2 p.m. that day. We're gonna pluck a couple soundings. One out of a few. Couple, one out of the St. Louis area. One out of southern Indiana, northern Kentucky, and another one out of Oklahoma to kind of gauge what we're potentially looking at right here. Just so you guys know what's going on. Here's what we have going on right here. The lapse rates in, ar around Missouri, Illinois, not particularly impressive. Around 6.4 degrees Celsius per kilometer right there. 
The surface to three kilometer, though, is about 7.7, .7, so that's a little better. And then you have wind shear. It's around 48 knots at surface of six kilometers. So, yeah, not particularly that great uh, uh, wind shear around the St. Louis area. I'd say southern Illinois, uh, southern Indiana, like around like Murfreesboro uh, and rural areas in southern Illinois. That's where I'm thinking it's going to be going to be the biggest threat. And we can go ahead and pluck a little bit of a sounding out of that area over there. Just kind of compare and contrast right there what we're looking at here's what we have going on for southern indiana right there we're looking at these uh, we're looking at even worse shear for tornadoes but we're still looking at decent shear for severe thunderstorms like surface of six kilometers 41 knots of of shear is not nothing to really scoff at right there especially when it comes to supercell development although i will say in that part of indiana my main concern is more like a squall line de uh, development and i know someone was commenting from Terre Haute about what the severe weather is going to look like. The severe weather, honestly, is going to be further south uh, from you than what we were initially thinking. So you got you from as of right now, it looks like you are dodging a bullet. So I did kind of get back to you on that uh, on that real quick. So just want to kind of get that out of the way real quickly. And then this is for parts of Oklahoma right here. There is a, str a decent cap and the lapse rates in Oklahoma, parts of Oklahoma and Missouri are a lot better than they are in Illinois, in Illinois, Indiana right there. This is what we have going on. 8.6 degrees Celsius per kilometers right there. We're looking at 10 knots a shear, so not really good for tornadoes over there. But surface to 6 kilometers is at 15, not, uh, 15, not 15 knots. That would be absolutely disastrous for severe weather. 55 knots right there and there is not really as much directional shear it's more or less speed shear but stuff to pay attention to nevertheless and then we ha and then we have we talked about this in southern indiana so that's what we have going on right there the last thing we're going to talk about real quickly is how this continues on and this continues on we now have an enhanced risk for parts of kentucky ohio and west virginia and a slight risk all the way from baltimore down to mississippi over there with a 30 percent probabilistic risk we'll have a more of a, a hazards risk as we continue to get closer to the event and this is kind of the Thing and this is kind of the timing that we're looking at as of right now for what you're looking at right here. Here's the simulated reflectivity. This moves through Illinois, Indiana, and then into Kentucky, Ohio, West Virginia into the morning, and that uh, into the morning. Well, first in the overnight, and then into the morning as it kind of just moves through a lot of these areas right there as it approaches the Mid Atlantic. So yeah, we have a lot had a lot of stuff to really talk about, and I had to speed through some things real quickly. But the impacts are mainly going to be the uh, the worst and cr from pretty much Oklahoma to southern Illinois where you're looking at uh, pretty much an all hazards risk depending on where you are in southern Missouri southern Illinois it's going to be more of a tornado risk in southern in Oklahoma it's going to be more of a hail and wind risk and before uh, and then it's going to move and turn into a squall line and start impacting areas east of there we will continue to keep you updated here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel as more information continues to come out but with that being said we're going to close the video out right here I hope you enjoyed it be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new it really helps out helps us make more videos like these the goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather and with that being said have a wonderful day guys stay safe